Yeah, using pre-made drum kits is kind of cool, but you know what's cooler? Making your own. And Logic's Drum Machine Designer makes that super easy, ready for you, built into Logic. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I looked at Logic Pro's samplers, and they are really, really cool, powerful samplers that are built into Logic Pro. At about the same time in 2020, when they released this new update, 10.5 back then, it brought in these two samplers, and it also brought in Drum Machine Designer, a really new capable tool that made use of some of these sampling capabilities, and it basically gave Logic Ableton's drum rack. If you've ever used Ableton, I've used Ableton myself. Other Ableton users are probably familiar with Drum Rack, a fantastic software instrument inside Ableton where you can just drag and drop sounds onto it and use drum pads to sequence them. Logic's Drum Machine Designer is very, very similar. Behind the scenes, the same as Ableton's Drum Rack, it's using the mini sampler, the quick sampler, as a way of sampling these drum hits and playing them back. But it's conveniently putting them all into a drum pad section where you can play those hits with drum pads, keyboards, whatever you like. I think it's pretty clear why drum machines are pretty cool, so we'll just dive straight in and take a look at it. So first of all, I've loaded up a pretty straightforward MIDI track. I'm actually gonna open up the library and I'm gonna look for electronic drum kit sounds and I'm just gonna pick one that I've downloaded. Clearly I haven't been keeping up with the huge amount of stuff they give away for free. I'm just gonna pick one of them. Let's go after party. That's now loaded up something called DMD or Drum Machine Designer. We can see that down here in the instrument slot. And if I open that up, that provides us the Drum Machine Designer. Okay, so taking a closer look at this thing, basically what it is, is a series of pads. And this sort of pad format of 16 pads arranged by this four by four grid pattern is so common. And it's common from the 1980s with the first digital samplers from Akai. And it's all the way through to now you know, from the MPC through to digital doors. We can see this current kind of standard, this four x four 16 pad standard. A lot of default kits are loaded up like this and inside each one of these cells here is a particular sound or a sample. And you can see them labeled here. So you've got a kick, you've got a couple of snares, a snare, a snare, a click. You've got some toms up here, some cymbals, a clap over here. And the cool thing is that there are even a few more pages. So there's a couple more pages and I've got some empty space here if I wanna add something myself. So looking at this first one here, if I just give this one a click, I can hear the sample being played. And that's a nice deep subby kick there. Let's go over to the snare, do the same thing. We can hear the snare sample. And you can see this coming up under each one of these and changing every time I move to the next one. Let's go to the click. New sample being loaded. This is actually a quick sampler and it's showing me the sample and I can make some adjustments here. If I wanted to fade in this sound, for example, for some reason, I could. But now I've got all of these different samples and they're all being loaded in. I've been playing them just by clicking on this little thing here, but you'll notice that the input is set to particular notes. So I've got C1 here, if I tap that on my keyboard, it's giving me my kick. D1 over here, my snare, the click there on C sharp one. So I can play this right out of the box with my MIDI keyboard or with my pad controller. They should line up nicely with the pad controls. The cool thing is this is actually a pretty standard format as well. So a lot of drum racks in both Ableton and Logic have the kick in the same place, for example. So you kind of get used to it, but you can switch and drag and move these around if you wanted to. Let's drag this one and swap it over here. Now I've swapped them over. This is now A sharp one for the click. And the hi-hat is now C-sharp one. I'm gonna drag those back around because I don't really want that, but there you go, you can if you would like. So just with a few controls on my keyboard, I can play a quick beat. Relatively simple, quite fun, and you can use them straight out of the box. Some of these other little ones can be quite fun as well. That's quite a nice sound, I like that one. So it's really up to you, you get to create your own beat and it's very simple. Over here, we could even create a MIDI region or a pattern region. I quite like this one for drum beats. When you create a pattern region, you're basically using this grid situation to decide when the hits are coming out of. So if I want my kick, for example, to play four on the floor, you know, every beat, I'll come over here and I will click one on each. And then when I play this, it'll play that on every beat. And let's put a snare, on every two and four, and the hi-hats, you know, the classic offbeat. We're getting a bit of a dance groove happening now, so let's play that. 
you can see that happening straight away. So it's really easy, really convenient. Ah, I'd love it, it's awesome. The cool thing is here is that that drum machine designer is really just the interface to what's actually going on under the hood. If you look at this track, you can see it's actually a track stack. It's a collection of tracks grouped together under one. And if I open that one up, I can see all the individual drums. So my kick here, for example, this is actually where the quick sampler lives that's sampling the kick drum. When I'm on this track and I'm using the DMD or the drum machine designer and I'm clicking this, it's referencing this track. This basically becomes a shortcut to play this track here. Something to be aware of. It's really, really cool. Because it's an individual track and all these are individual tracks, if you decide you want to change one of the sounds, you can. Let's go to the snare, for example. We've been playing this snare one after party. Let's add some reverb. Now let's play the snare. Really, really cool. So we can affect these differently. Pretty cool, right? That means if you want to add some extra compression on your kick because you want to make it nice and fat and really thumpy, then you can. If you want to beef up the EQ on the snare to make it sound brittle and harsh and cracking through the mix, you can. You want to add some reverb to some claps. You want to pan these differently. Clap one over here, clap two over here. You can do all of that within the group. It's absolutely fantastic. So that's how Drum Machine Designer works. Basically, it's a track stack at the top. Each one of those pads connects to a different track in your group. And you can deal with the individual tracks, apply effects, EQ, mixing, turn up and down the volume, pan, all that stuff. Or you can go back to the main thing and apply group effects on that main track. You could put reverb on the whole thing. You could compress the whole thing if you want to. All right, I'm gonna create a new track now. I'm gonna create a software instrument, just an empty channel strip, and I'm gonna add in my own drum machine designer. So I'm gonna jump into here to instrument, come down to drum machine designer and add in my own drum machine designer here. So it's pretty much empty at the moment. That's all it is. And it's only got one instrument at the moment, which is this first pad. It's now my job to fill up these zones because I don't have anything that needs it. So over here, you may have noticed that the library has opened up into all of the drum sounds. So I can come in here and, you know, try out something. Let's create this track here and make it the 808 flex. There it is. And if I play the kit, done. Let's add a track here. So I just click the plus button. Select this track and make it a snare. Let's go looking for a snare, shall we? Sounds good enough to me. Very quick, very easy. All I've been doing is adding the plus button, which creates its own track. And that creates its own track over here. And then I've been applying something from the library. In each one of these tracks, it has its own inspector with its quick sample. So it's loading up an audio file and its own channel EQ or whatever effects it's got on there if it wants to. If I want to though, I can drag an audio file directly into here. If I have an audio file, I can just drag and drop it here. For instance, let's look for a clap to drop here. I'm going to go into Apple's loops for a moment, jump into instrument, and maybe I'll just search clap. I have an analog clap beat. Let's have a listen. It's got claps in it, so I can definitely use this. Let's just drag and drop that into the clap section here. And there you go, it's created a track there. It's turned on loop by default, so I'm gonna just turn that off straight away. I don't need that. It's just picking up that it's a drum loop. But I just want one click in here. Right now, if I play this, that's a kick. If I hold this down, I know that this one here sounds like it's a clap. So let's just zero in on that one. Bring it in here. Let's do some little fades. Actually, it might be sort of more here. Let's have a listen to that. Nice, we've got our clap sort of happening. Gonna change it to one shot as well so that every time I click it, there it goes. So I've got my clap in there, but you can also hear that there is a kick. There's a kick sound. Now in my other video, when I looked at the quick sampler and sampler, I showed you how you could use the filter to scoop out frequencies that you don't want. In this little brief view of quick sampler that's on the screen at the moment, you can't see those functions. And that's why it's important to know that there's a subgroup of tracks that you can go diving into if you want to adjust this sort of thing. So if I come now down to my analog clap beat, here is my quick sampler. It's the same quick sampler that's here, but when I click on it, we've got some more controls. So straight off the bat, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off key tracking because right now, if I press lots of other keys other than C3, the pitch will be all over the place. 
I don't want that. I just want to be able to press any key and have the same sound and the true original sound. There we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a filter. I'm going to change it to not a low pass, but a high pass, quite a sharp high pass maybe. And I'm going to allow through the clap. There we go. So I basically allowed through the high frequencies and stopped it just before it was getting those subby kick frequencies. So now we've just got a clap. Now when we go back to the original kit, we can just play that one and it's just the clap beat. Really simple, really straightforward and easy to use. So you could go wild, you could throw all sorts of things in here and you can see that there are some recommendations on what should be in there. See A1 percussion three, not quite that detailed, but C sharp two crash, that's pretty detailed. The reason for that is, as I mentioned before, there are some certain standards that things often sort of appear in. There's often the kick drum is in the bottom left pad, for example. So it's just trying to put recommendations there so that you put them in familiar places all the time. It's little helpful tricks. I quite like that, that's quite nice. I'm gonna probably ignore it because I like my own kind of setup, but you know, it's nice that they're there. Don't forget as well, you do have other pages. So this starts on E2, for example, and this one starting off on G sharp three. So these, can go across a whole keyboard, much more than just the 16 original pads. So you can fill out all of these sounds and make a really complex beat. You'll just be making more and more tracks under here for those instruments. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I, I really like this sample. So I might wanna resample it, for example. I could right click and go resample and it throws the sample up here. So it's exactly the same sample, but it's just the sample itself that I played. But I could morph and, and change this into something entirely different if I wanted. I'm going to bring this further down here, pop it next to it here, and let's jump onto resample. I'm going to come down here to the audio effects on just this resampled pad and add in something like some reverb. Now I've got my original sample and some reverb sample for those extra special hits if you want to. So you can be really flexible, really cool, and very creative with the Drum Machine Designer. And it would be fantastic if you took a look at it and incorporated it into your next track. Who knows what you could make of it? It's gonna be fantastic for you. So I hope you've enjoyed that. There are plenty more logic tricks on this channel for you and plenty more on the way, so do consider subscribing. But otherwise, thanks for watching to the end and I will catch you in the next one.